Well, we've sung there some amazing truths and I hope they enabled you to celebrate some of the things that God has done for us, some of the promises that he makes and the blessings that we experience as a result. And rightly, some of those blessings belong to the future so we can sing of boldly, confidently approaching the eternal throne, uh, waiting to claim that crown which will be ours. But we can also do some of that in the present, can't we? And the Bible talks about us approaching God now with confidence uh, so that we receive mercy and grace uh, for today's living. And that's what we're going to do now in prayer. Now, often when we pray, we listen to somebody else pray and then hopefully say Amen. Today, we're going to do it slightly differently and I'm going to invite you to pray as well, whether on your own or in your household. So I've got four areas that are going to come up in a moment and they start big and they start wide and then they narrow it down. And what you need to do is to choose uh, something to pray for in each area. And so however young or old you are, you can all join in. Uh, children, uh, you might want to uh, talk with your parents about what you're going to pray for. Uh, you might want to uh, write a prayer instead of praying out loud. Or you might even draw a prayer to God on one of the areas. Uh, but the key thing is that you're going to be able to press the pause button uh, after you've seen the four areas and then decide amongst yourselves what you're going to pray for and then pray. Uh, if you're on your own, you can obviously do that as well. You just decide, choose what you're going to pray for in each area and then pray out. Uh, or you might even, if you know somebody else is watching at the same time, uh, pick the phone up, give them a call and pray over the phone uh, with them. Uh, but the invitation today is for you to decide what you intercede for. And uh, because you're going to be pressing the pause button, that can take as long or short a time as you need to. So are you ready to see how we're going to pray? Let's have a look. So the first decision you need to make is what country or mission partner you'd like to pray for. And if you need a little bit of help in making that decision, why not pick up your tablet or your phone and check out Martin's website and our mission partners there. Or look on the world news today but decide a country or a mission partner to pray for. Having chosen a country I'm now going to get you to choose a political leader to pray for. You might want to see how many you can name whether you can name our local MPs, whether you know the leaders of the different political parties but when you've named them choose someone to pray for as we obey the call to pray for those in authority over us. So thirdly, decide a community you want to pray for, a group of people that you're in touch with. Uh, that might be one that uh, you're in contact with through the church, for example, the Westbury area or the Mighton area. It might be the neighbours that you live amongst, or it might be the people you work amongst, or perhaps even the people that you study amongst if you're at school, but choose a group of people to pray for. Then lastly, decide something you're going to pray for yourself or for the wider church family in the area of your own spiritual growth and love for Jesus. So there you go, there's the four pictures. You should have decided four different things to pray for. Uh, whether on your own or as a household and I'm now going to suggest you press the pause button and spend a few moments praying for those things uh, after which I'll pray. So press the pause button and enjoy a few moments praying for those things that you have chosen. Well I hope you enjoy choosing what you could pray for. I'd be fascinated to know what countries in the world were prayed for, perhaps which political leader you chose, uh, which community you felt burdened to pray for, what you prayed for yourself or the church as a whole. Um, but I can't hear those uh, at the moment. But in one sense, it doesn't matter that I or others can't hear them. Uh, the key thing is that we have confidence that God has heard our prayers because we are in Christ. And we're going to give thanks for that for a moment. So let's bow our heads. Father, we give thanks that you hear our prayers, not because of our words, not because of our goodness, 
not because of our length, not because of our age, not because of the number of people in our household, but because we are in Jesus, we belong to him. We give you our thanks and praise that we have a high priest who gives us freedom to come. We ask that we will enjoy that uh, more and more, uh, both individually and together as a church community. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, some promises, we don't have to wait very long for them to come true, do we? So if you're promised an ice cream at the end of your walk in the park, you don't have to wait that long. Although probably sometimes it can feel a long time depending on the length of the walk. But actually it comes true quite quickly. But I don't know if you've ever had this experience. Uh, perhaps there's something that you'd really, really like. Perhaps it's a new bike uh, or a new gadget or a new computer game. And you're told that you can have it as a gift for Christmas. You'll have to wait for Christmas for it to be given to you. And then you suddenly realise that actually it's only June or July and you've got half the year to wait. Some of us perhaps find waiting easier uh, than others. But waiting has certainly helped when you know the character of the person that's made the promise to you. Well, some of God's promises also belong to the still to come category. There are some things that we are still waiting to see fulfilled. And we're going to watch a video in a moment that begins to open up today's passage for us. That's Romans 8, 18 to 25, and begins to speak of, uh, of hope and what it is to keep waiting. Now, it's a video that has words in it. And so if we were at Westbury or at the lower school hall, there is something I'd say now, and that would be make sure you're sitting close to somebody who can whisper the words in your ear if you're not used to reading from the screen. I'm going to say the same kind of thing now, but you don't have to whisper. So if you're not used to reading from the screen or you can't read from the screen, then uh, make sure uh, an adult or an older sibling uh, in the room reads the words out for you so you don't miss out. That video began to introduce us to today's passage and in a moment Rachel Orton is going to read it to us and then Ed is going to explain it. Before they do uh, we're going to sing again and we're going to sing a song that has an audacious title an audacious title and that is God is for us. How audacious of us to be able to claim that the living God the holy God the creator God is for us. And yet that is what his word declares. And that's what the theme of this song is. We are going to declare 
that the one who gave his son to set us free uh, holds us in his love. So let's sing together. God is for us.